In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa. In, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls. Giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, reign on earth. Fiat. Want to know? Book of Heaven, Volume Twenty Four, Part Four. April Twenty Six, Nineteen Twenty Eight. What one gives to God with the "I love you." The prodigious secret. How it forms many divine births. How nothing of what our Lord did escaped the most holy virgin. How the divine will is the breath of the soul. I was doing my round in the divine fiat, and according to my usual way, I was investing all of creation with my refrain. I love you, I adore you, I bless you. And while doing this, I thought to myself, what do I give to my God with this long story of I love yous? And my sweet Jesus moving in my interior told me, my daughter, a pure, holy, and upright love is a divine birth. It comes out of God and has the virtue of rising and entering into God, to multiply these births from him, and to bring God himself to each creature who yearns to love him. Therefore, when the soul is invested by this love and receives this birth, she can form many other births for as many times as she says her, I love you in such a way that her I love you flies before God. And the Supreme Being looks inside the I love you that the creature sends to him, and in that little I love you, he finds all of himself and feels he is being given all of himself by her. That little I love you contains a prodigious secret. In its littleness, it encloses the infinite, the immense, the power, so much so that it can say, I give God to God. And in that little I love you of the creature, the infinite being feels all of his divine qualities being touched because, since it is a birth from him, 
he finds all of himself in it. This is what you give me with your many I love yous. You give me myself as many times. There is nothing more beautiful, greater, and more pleasing to me that you could give me than to give me all of myself. My fiat that forms in you the life of your I love you for me delights in forming many birds from us, and so it keeps the pace of the I love you in you, yearning to always mint the divine coin of your I love you for each created thing. And then it looks to see whether all the things created by us are pearled with the prodigious secret of your I love you. My daughter, we do not look at whether what the creature does is great or small. We look rather at whether there is the prodigy of our secret. And her littlest acts, thoughts, and sighs are invested by the power of our will. All is in this, and it is all for us. After this, I was continuing my round in the fiat to accompany all that Jesus had done in redemption. And I thought to myself, how I wish I had done what the sovereign mamma did when she was with Jesus. Certainly she followed all of his acts and let nothing escape her. But as I was thinking of this and other things, my always lovable Jesus added, My daughter, indeed nothing escaped my mamma, because everything I did and suffered resounded like deep echo in the depth of her soul. And she was so attentive in waiting for the echo of my acts, that the echo, together with everything I did and suffered, would remain imprinted in her. And the sovereign queen emitted her echo within mine, and made it resound in the depth of my interior, in such a way that torrents would run between me and her, seas of light and of love that we unloaded into each other. And I made the deposit of all my acts in her maternal heart. I would not have been content had I not had her always with me, had I not felt her continuous echo, that resounding in mine drew from me even my heartbeats and breaths to deposit them in her. In the same way, I would not be content if even from that time I did not have you, who were to follow all of my acts in my divine will, in fact, even from that time, I made the deposit of them in you, moving the echo of my Queen Mama into the depth of your soul. And through the length of the centuries, I looked at the echo of my Mama in you in order to realize the kingdom of my divine will. This is why you feel as though drawn to follow my acts. It is her maternal echo that resounds in you. And I take the occasion to make the deposit of it in the depth of your interior, to give you the grace of making my eternal fiat reign in you. Then I felt my poor mind as though immersed in the sea of the divine fiat, its light invested all of me, and I could see neither the height nor the depth of its boundaries. I felt it as more than life in me, flowing everywhere within me. And my beloved Jesus, moving in my interior, told me, My daughter, my will is life. It is air. It is breath of the creature. It is not like the other virtues that are neither continuous life nor breath of the creature 
and therefore they are exercised at time and circumstance. Patience is not always exercised, because many times there is no one who allows it to be exercised. And so the virtue of patience remains idle without giving its continuous life to the creature. Nor does obedience or charity form their life, because the one who has the continuous act of commanding, or the one toward whom charity could be exercised, may not be there. Therefore the virtues can form the ornament of the soul, but not the life. On the other hand, my will is prime act of all the acts of the creature. So if she thinks, if she speaks, if she breathes, it is my will that forms the thought, the word, and giving her the breath, it maintains the circulation, the heartbeat, the warmth. And just as one cannot live without breathing, so one cannot live without my divine will. There is always need of it to be able to continue living. Yet, while they receive its continuous breath, it is not recognized. My will is so necessary that one cannot do without it even for one instant, because it is not only the bearer of all human acts, but it is also the bearer of all created things. My fiat is prime act of the sun and makes creatures breathe light. It is prime act of the air, of water, of fire, of the wind, and creatures breathe my divine will in the air they breathe, in the water they drink, in the fire that warms them, in the wind that purifies them. There is not one thing in which they do not breathe my will. Therefore in all things, be they small or great, even in the breath. The creature can always do my will. And by not doing it, it is an act of life of divine will that she loses. It is its breath that she suffocates continuously. She receives its life, its breath but to convert it into human, rather than to be herself transformed into my divine will. April 29th, 1928, how the virtues are seeds, plants, flowers, and fruits, while the divine will is life. The marvels of the I love you how love is never tired. One who lives in the divine will cannot go to purgatory. The universe would rebel. My poor mind is always prey to the supreme fiat. It seems to me that I can think of nothing else, nor do I want to occupy myself with anything else. I feel a current in me that stops me now at one point, now at another point of the divine will. But I always end up in it without ever taking all of its endless light because I am incapable of it. And my lovable Jesus, moving in my interior, making me a surprise, told me, my daughter, when the soul practices a virtue, the first act she practices forms the seed. And as she practices the second, the third act, and so forth, 
She cultivates the seed. She waters it, and it grows into a plant and produces its fruits. If then she practices it only once, or a few times, the seed is neither watered nor cultivated. It dies, and the soul remains without plant and without fruit, because it is never one act alone that forms a virtue, but repeated acts. It happens as to the earth. It is not enough to sow the seed in its womb, but one must cultivate it often. Water it, if one wants the plant and the fruits of that seed. Otherwise the earth becomes hard over that seed and buries it without giving it life. Now, one who wants the virtue of patience, of obedience and the like, must sow the first seed, and then water it and cultivate it with other acts. In this way, she will form many beautiful and varied plants within her soul. On the other hand, my will is not seed, like the virtues, but life. And as the soul begins to be resigned, to look at my will in everything, and to live in it, the little divine life is formed in her. And as she advances in the practice of living in my will, this divine life grows and keeps expanding to the point of filling the soul with all of this life in such a way that nothing is left of her but a veil that covers it and hides it within itself. And just as with virtues, so with my will. If the creature does not give the continuous nourishment of her acts to the little divine life within herself, this life does not grow and does not fill her entirely. It happens as to a newborn baby who dies at birth if he is not nourished. In fact, since my will is life, more than the virtues that are images of the plants, it needs continuous nourishment in order to grow and to become a whole life as much as a creature is capable of. Here is then the necessity for you to always live in it, that you may take its delicious food from my will itself so as to nourish its divine life in you. See, then, what great difference exists between the virtues and my will. The first are plants, flowers, and fruits that embellish the earth and delight the creatures, while my fiat is heaven, sun, air, heat, heartbeat, all the things that form life and divine life in the creature. Therefore, love this life and give it continuous nourishment that it may fill you completely and nothing may be left of you. After this, I was continuing my round in the divine volition and repeating the refrain of the I love you, I was saying, Jesus, my love, I want to leave all of my being in your fiat so that I may find myself in all created things to pearl them with my I love you. Even more, I want to place my heart in the center of the earth. And as I palpitate, I want to embrace all of its inhabitants and following all of their heartbeats with my I love you, I want to give you the love of each one of them. And as my heartbeat is repeated from within the center of the earth, I want to place my I love you in all the seeds that the earth encloses in its womb. 
And as the seeds sprout and plants, herbs, and flowers are formed, I want to place in them my I love you, that I may see them enclosed in my I love you for Jesus. But as I was saying this, my thought interrupted my refrain of the I love you, telling me how much nonsense you are speaking. Jesus himself must be tired of hearing your long sing song. I love you, I love you. And Jesus moving so very hurriedly in my interior and looking at all creation to see whether in all things, small and big, there was the life of my I love you, told me, my daughter, what marvel, what enchantment to see all things pearled with your I love you. If all creatures could see all the plants, the atoms of the earth, the stones, the drops of water, pearled with your I love you, and the light of the sun, the air that they breathe, the sky that they see, filled with your I love you, and the stars shining with your I love you, what marvel would not arise in them? What sweet enchantment would not draw the pupils of their eyes to look at your refrain and the long sing-song of your I love you? They would say, How is it possible that she let nothing escape her? We ourselves feel pearled with her I love you. And they would wander around checking and investigating everything to see whether, in fact, nothing had escaped you, so as to enjoy the enchantment of your I love you. Now, if this marvelous enchantment remains unobserved by the terrestrial creatures, it does not remain unobserved in heaven and the inhabitants up there enjoy the enchantment and the marvels of seeing the whole creation filled and pearled with your I love you. They feel their I love you harmonize with yours. They do not feel separated from the earth because love unites them together and forms the same notes and the same harmonies. And then, you must know that when all things, small and big, were created, I never tired of purling them with my repeated and incessant I love yous for you. And just as I did not tire of placing them, so I do not tire of hearing them being repeated by you. On the contrary, I enjoy that my I love you does not remain isolated, but has the company of yours. And as yours echoes in mine, they fuse together and live common life. And besides, love is never tired. Rather, it is bearer of joy and happiness for me. Then, I don't know how, a thought came to me. If I died and went to purgatory, what will I do? If, while being here, imprisoned in my body, caged more than in a narrow prison, my poor soul feels it so much when Jesus deprives me of his adorable presence that I don't know what I would do and suffer to find him again, what would happen? If when the prison of my body is broken, and my soul, free and loose, takes its rapid flight, I did not find my Jesus, the center in which I must take refuge, never to go out again. And instead of finding my life, there is a footnote here where life is referring to Jesus as, in my life, Jesus and instead of finding my life, Jesus, 
the center of my rest, I found myself flung into purgatory. What would be my pain and my torment? Now, while I was feeling oppressed by these thoughts, my beloved Jesus clasped me all to himself and added, My daughter, why do you want to oppress yourself? Don't you know that one who lives in my will has the bond of union with the heavens, with the sun, with the sea, with the wind, with all creation? Her acts are fused in all created things because my will has placed them all in common as its own things in such a way that all of creation feels the life of this creature. And if she could go to purgatory, they would all feel offended. The entire universe would rebel and they would not let her go alone to purgatory. The heavens, the sun, the wind, the sea, all would follow her, moving from their places, and offended they would say to their creator, She is yours and ours. The life that animates all of us animates her. How is this? In purgatory? The heavens would claim her with their love. The sun would speak up with its light, the wind with its lamenting voices, the sea with its tumultuous waves. All would have a word to defend she who has lived common life with them. But since one who lives in my will absolutely cannot go to purgatory, the universe will remain in its place, and my will will have the triumph of bringing to heaven the one who has lived in it on this earth of exile. Therefore, continue to live in my will, and do not want to make your mind gloomy and to oppress yourself with things that do not belong to you. April 30th, 1928 Turmoil and New Ordering How the Kingdom of the Divine Will is Decreed Redemption is the army. The Divine Word is the generator. I was thinking about the Divine Will, and oh how many thoughts crowded my mind. Having transported me outside of myself, my always lovable Jesus had shown me the many chastisements with which he wanted to strike the human generations. And I, shaken, thought to myself, how can the kingdom of the divine fiat come if the earth abounds with evil and divine justice is arming all the elements to destroy man and what serves man? And besides... This kingdom did not come when Jesus came upon earth with his visible presence. How can it come now? As things are now, it seems difficult to me. And my sweet Jesus, moving in my interior, told me, My daughter, everything you saw will serve to purify and prepare the human family. The turmoils will serve to reorder, and the destructions to build more beautiful things. If a collapsing building is not torn down, a new and more beautiful one cannot be formed upon those very ruins. I will stir everything for the fulfillment of my divine will. And besides, when I came upon earth, it was not decreed by our divinity that the kingdom of my will should come, but that of redemption. And in spite of human ingratitude, it was accomplished. However, 
it has not yet covered all of its way. Many regions and peoples live as if I had not come. Therefore, it is necessary that it make its way and walk everywhere, because redemption is the preparatory way for the kingdom of my will. It is the army that goes forward in order to form the peoples to receive the regime, the life, the king of my divine will. And so, what was not decreed for that time, we decree today, for the fulfillment of the kingdom of our fiat. And when we decree, all is done. In us, it is enough to decree in order to accomplish what we want. This is why what seems difficult to you will all be made easy by our power. It will act like those mighty winds after long days of thick and rainy clouds. The power of the wind dispels the clouds, takes rain away, and makes the good weather return and the sun embrace the earth. In the same way, more than ruling wind, our power will put to flight the darkness of the human will and will make the sun of my eternal will reappear to embrace the creatures. And everything I manifest to you, the truths that pertain to it, are nothing other than the confirmation of what we have decreed. Furthermore, if the kingdom of my divine fiat and the time of its nearing fulfillment had not been decreed before by the divinity, there would have been no reason, nor necessity, nor purpose for choosing you, for keeping you sacrificed for so many years, and for entrusting to you, as to its little daughter, the knowledges of it, its admirable truths, and its secret and hidden sorrows. And not only this, but the divinity has acted with you in a way that is all paternal and maternal in order to sow in you the seed of divine daughtership and so that you would take its interests to heart more than if they were your own. This signifies the reality of what had been decreed by us, to the point of choosing the subject, of using the means, and of giving the teachings, in order to descend down below to the human family, and establish in their midst what had been decreed in heaven. If the kingdom of my will had not been decreed, I would not have told you so much about it, nor would I have chosen you in a way all special for this purpose. My word would have been without life and without fruit if it were not so, and without the generative and fecundating virtue, which cannot be. My word possesses the virtue of generating and of forming through its fecundity, its offspring of endless lives. This happened in redemption because it had been decreed by us in heaven. A virgin was created who was to be the mother of the eternal word. If this had not been decreed, there would have been no reason nor necessity to create and choose this virgin, holy, unique, and special, nor to give so many manifestations to the prophets who depicted the life of the Word in his humanity, describing his pains so vividly as if they had him present with them. Therefore, when our divine benignity deigns to choose and to manifest itself, it is the sure sign and the beginning of the carrying out of its works, which it holds as decreed. Therefore be attentive, 
and let your Jesus do everything. Because neither power nor means are lacking for what I want and for carrying out what I have decreed. You have reached the end of the Book of Heaven, Volume 24, Part 4. Fiat Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.